Hi, Roy here on my channel Roy Reads Anything which is about the joys of eclectic reading and today I'm going to be exploring some Mills and Boone books, Mills and Boone Euromances from the early 1990s. So I discovered these by finding one of them in a, a charity shelf of books in a supermarket where you, you help yourself to a book and you leave a a random amount of money um, and just thought oh that looks interesting the idea that Mills and Boone had somehow celebrated Europeanism just just appealed to me and it was, it was a great book and I decided maybe I'd try and collect the set which I thought was going to be 12, 12 books which turned out to be slightly wrong um, and it also turned out to be a bit more difficult and weird than I expected. So I'm going to talk you through that process and in so doing we'll look at the totality of Mills and Boone's Euromances and similar from the period 1992 to 1994. So that's what's going to happen. I'm going to go through them in sequence. So chronologically uh, the first of them is called Alpha Man. And I'll talk about this one in a in a bit of detail because it sort of sets the template for all the others. So Alpha Man, which is a great title, not just because it's the first of the series and, you know, Alphabet, but also because genre romances often seem to feature these powerful males and, uh, you know, Alpha Man, what could, what could be better as the description of the... Uh, the, the, the male love interest we're going to experience. Uh, so you get this swishy Euromance branding with the 12 stars of the European community, one of them literally flying off into space with a country flag next to it, um, which is the Greece. Sometimes the name of the country is on the cover as well. Uh, photographic cover of a couple in a clinch, um, on the back, more photos. You see that photo again, plus some touristy shots of Greek things like windmills and so on. Sometimes you get a, sometimes you get the people actually in the setting. Uh, so just look at the blurb. This is by Kay Thorpe. I intend to have you, Zoe. Make no mistake about that. We belong together, you and I. But how long would their affair last? They came from different countries, different backgrounds. A man like Alexis Theodorou, rich, successful, powerful, was used to taking what he wanted and letting go of it just as easily. But Zoe wasn't capable of such a short-term view, and her new job in Greece meant all the world to her. Was an unwise attraction going to ruin everything for her? Sets up the story nicely. Moving inside the inside front cover, sorry, the, the first page blurb. I think it's time I said good night. Because I say what is on both our minds? Alexis was smiling still. I feel the same attraction for you that you feel for me. I see no point in pretense. Apparently not. Is it a condition of my continuing employment that I admit to this? attraction and act accordingly? An enhancement, perhaps? I see. Zoe came jerkily to her feet. Then the answer is no. The answer to what, he asked, without changing of inflection. I asked nothing of you as yet. So that sounds like some material to go to the HR department, but is in fact a an excerpt from the romantic tale. Then we get, and this will follow through the whole lot, Two, two little introductory texts, one from the editor, says, Dear reader, welcome, or as they say in Greek, Kalos Orisate. This month marks the start of our brand new series of romances written by your favourite authors, which we have chosen to celebrate 1992, a special year of European unity. So 1992 and the Maastricht Treaty had been signed, paving the way for the European community to become the European Union with things like freedom of movement and so on. 
So quite prescient really of Mills and Boone. Shortly to come would be the, the, the easy jet generation flef, flying around Europe, lots of people working in, in different countries. And obviously if, if one thing that meant was romance. Anyway, back to the back to 1992, we begin an exciting journey through the 12 member countries of the EC in Greece. So relax and enjoy the sunshine, the ancient sites and the fascinating customs of this glorious corner of Europe and revel in a heartwarming romance too. Adio, says the editor. And then the author says, um, basically, I won't I won't read it all out, but um, some stuff about how she how she likes Greece. Greece holds a special place in my mind. And um, apparently the, the authors had to pitch for these and show that some sort of connection with the place. So uh, yes, yeah, so that frames the whole thing. 12 journey through 12 member countries. Here's me thinking there will be therefore be 12 books. An idea reinforced by this map, which shows 12 countries shows where they are on a map. You've got the 12 stars of the flag again and a European community in a nice bit of um, nice bit of desktop publishing there. Followed by a map of the of Greece showing the locations of the story. So they're kind of putting a lot of work into this Mills and Boone. It's obviously not just a casual casual thing and uh, there is also ah yeah Turn to the back pages of this book for Welcome to Europe, our fascinating fact file. So, and this does seem quite extraordinary. Welcome to Europe, joint branding, a Mills and Boone, Mills and Boone rose logo surrounded by the European stars. And you get facts about the area. Athens, the cradle of civilization. For the history that began two and a half thousand years ago in ancient times, etc etc um, the romantic present um, yeah so you get this kind of overview of the place so that's what a Euromance looks like so I'm now after the 12 they're dated that was September 1992 so using the dates going through them in sequence we then get Hungarian Rhapsody by Jessica Steele uh, same thing, picture on the front, tourist scenes on the back. We get The Green Heart by Jessica Marchant. Should mention, ah, right, though, this is set in Luxembourg, by the way. Um, so we're still getting all the same stuff. The Dear Reader, the author says, Europe map, uh, yeah. Win a trip to Italy, so another international thing that they were doing. So let's just see what win a trip to Italy is all about, which seems pretty pretty generous. Um, three lucky readers and their partners will spend a romantic weekend in Italy next May. You'll stay in a popular hotel in the centre of Rome, perfectly suited to visit the famous sites by day and enjoy the food of wine by Italy, of Italy by night. During the weekend, we're holding our first International Reader Party, an exciting celebratory event where you can mingle with Mills and Boone fans from all over Europe and meet some of our top authors. So some pretty amazing fan servicing there. I don't see why that comes as a, as a surprise. Science fiction community, for instance, has international events all the time. Um, I just think that event would be a great background for a cosy crime story um, or perhaps one of those feel-good British films with kind of half the half the acting profession in them a sort of um, best exotic marigold hotel kind of thing Bill Nye could be in it anyway Luxembourg ticked, ticked off the list Haunting Alliance this is set in Portugal, it's by Catherine George, and it's the man who likes to stroke women's chins. Chin stroking man is become an unofficial name for this book. Um, and you've got to love the, the kind of side eye she's giving, a bit of a, I came all the way to Portugal and all that's happening is my chin's being stroked. 
although we do see them out shopping on the back in what looks like a market. So, uh, yes, and some oranges. So, uh, Portugal, Haunting Alliance. The Bruges Engagement, Catherine Kerr. This is one of the writers still writing, and um, often under his actual name, Marcus Gabriel. So, uh, there goes Belgium. UK. This is one I've read and done a review video about that I'll hopefully remember to link to. Um, so, uh, yeah, the United Kingdom, although in practice it's all set in England. Um, but don't worry, there'll be more UK to come. Uh, some nice Stonehenge imagery on that one. My first ever genre romance at all. Diamond Heart, Suzanne McCarthy, set in the Netherlands. Also reviewed that on here. Mask of Deception is set in, going by the colour of the flag, in Italy. Okay, Sarah Wood. Uh, another one with some location photography. So, you know, they're, they're investing in this. And I think Mills and Boone were and are very savvy in their marketing. Um, apparently, when the Berlin Wall fell, they famously gave away 700,000 Mills and Boones. Uh, this has been in 1989, so a few years before this. They gave away 700,000 books at the checkpoints where Eastern European citizens were coming through to experience the West. So they'd, they'd give them to women as part of establishing their, their what became lucrative markets in, in those um, Eastern European countries. Meanwhile, Viking Magic by Angela Wells. Uh, where are we now? Copenhagen, Denmark. Very nice. Love of My Heart takes us to Era. It's by Emma Richmond. And Dark Sunlight is in Spain. Okay, figured there had to be a Spain. Now we're starting to see the name of the country appearing for the help of people who can't decode from the cover the uh, the where where it actually is and uh, number 12 remember we're looking for 12 the strangely titled designed to annoy set in Germany by Elizabeth Oldfield I think the design thing is probably he's like a car designer you know so it's a or an industrial designer so it's that sort of Wurstbrung Dirk Technics so sort of stuff um, right, that's 12, so what's wrong with this picture? Well, we haven't had France yet, and Hungary wasn't in the European community. So if we look back at that Hungarian Rhapsody, we will actually see free with compliments, not for sale. So this was actually given away, bundled, shrink-wrapped together with Alpha Man. So it's a kind of number zero in the sequence. Another weird fact about Hungarian Rhapsody, there are Mills and Boone comics drawn in a manga style and Hungarian Rhapsody is one of them that has been adapted into comic book form. Okay, so we still need another one to make our 12. That being Healing Fire, Patricia Wilson, and that is in France. So we've got the set. Are we finished? Well, two things suggest maybe not. One is Harlequin in America published postcards from Europe. There are 12 of those. I thought they would probably be straight reprints of the same 12, but they're not. There's seven of them, plus a bunch of other titles. And in the back of, say, Healing Fire, we get the promotional message, look out for two titles every month in our series of European romances. And it lists a bunch of new ones. So it's obvious they're kind of carrying on. OK, two titles every month. What do we then get? Well, you get Tower of Shadows, still the same Euromance branding, um, and another one set in France. So if we thought France was missing out, do not worry, they've got at least two. So, okay, Tower of Shadows, great gothic title. It should, you know, you think it should have one of those pictures of a woman running away from a 
gothic castle um, but um, you have got a photograph of a rather gothic castle so I plan to be reading this one sometime note that they've all looked like this so basically there are 14 Euromances with the word Euromance on the cover but remember they're carrying on two a month uh, I'm going by the way by uh, the numbered sequences on the spine so here's the next one, Conspiracy of Love. Standard Mills and, Brune, Mills and Boone branding. This is what I remember as being what Mills and Boone's looked like. When I worked in a newsagent shop, there was um, one customer had their subscription wad of Mills and Boone's delivered via the newsagents. Uh, as well as she would also get a packet of Palmer violets and 10 woodbines, unless her friend was visiting when she would get 20. So somehow it's in classic branding, they've dropped Euromance stuff and yet it's got all the other features. It's got the, uh, this month, our European island. Oh, sorry, I should have said it's set in Sardinia. Um, talks about a European island author proving that they like Sardinia as well. You're still getting the fact file and you also get the map, although the map has changed look and improved. So the the early maps were quite austere. They looked as if they belonged in a sort of government report. Now you've got one that's more looks more illustrative and it's the same style for the country map. So not just carrying on, but kind of upgrading what they're doing. And yet it's in the old style, but they're announcing a new look for Mills and Boons as a whole coming along. So I guess this was some weird kind of uh, transitional one. Uh, I should mention, I've mentioned they did, they did a giveaway of Hungarian Rhapsody. There was also, they, there was a tie-in with the Sunday Mirror. Every reader can have a Euromance book. And they did a survey a survey to people across many different European countries which they then would publish the results uh, or you know try and get the results into the press as a way of getting some free publicity so that would from that survey there were things like you know, women prefer men in boxer shorts um, six out of every hundred German women consider Irish men the sexiest in Europe for instance so yeah little bit of an aside there. Okay, so now we get, they're carrying on, they're still coming in this new branding with the heart. So A Part of Heaven by Jessica Marchant is Bulgaria. Uh, nice map of Bulgaria. All the usual yummy features. So I'm still buying these because I think, oh well I got the 12, there's a few more. Carry on getting them, where's the harm? So the postman might not have been so keen because every day I'd get these little packages. Uh, they're pretty easy to find on eBay, not expensive, but the people who are only getting a few pence for their what they're selling, they don't provide a lot of bibliographic details. So they're easier to collect once you know what they're actually called, because the, the listings aren't going to say Euromance. Or if say you wanted one of a particular country for a laugh, because you go in there, a bit of holiday reading, um, they don't tell you that either. But I've figured all that out. I'm telling you it in this video and it's in the description as well so I've got you covered if that's what you want to do. Uh, so Calypso's Island and that island is Greek mythology one but also it's welcome to Malta. So they're scooping up lots of countries now. Um, you know it's gone way beyond European community member states. Um, Roman Spring, they're not all on islands. Uh, this one is Rome. Okay, so Italy, I think Italy have got about four. Uh, so fair enough, uh, I suppose one can amuse oneself joining the hearts together. For instance, with Reckless Attraction by Kay Thorpe, which is set in Norway. Okay, so it's not all, not all Mediterranean. Still they come, the touch of Aphrodite, Joanna Mansell, with some extra branding now, Island Dreams. So the island thing gets its own logo. We've lost Euromances, 
but they're still done like Euromancers with the maps and the fact file. Um, but it's also island dreams. So, you know, Europe moving into islands. Um, Lair of the Dragon. Let's not forget the United Kingdom. Uh, and now we've got one set in Wales. When Naomi's journalist sister, there's a lot of journalists in these. I guess it's a good profession for the protagonist to have because you're, you're mobile and it's a little bit glamorous. When Naomi's journalist sister asked her to infiltrate the lair of the dragon, Bran Llewellyn, Llewellyn's private Welsh retreat, she couldn't re refuse. So this time the power man is a, uh, an artist. And we're into 1994 now. Yeah. Wales. The Dark Edge of Love. Now back to an island. That island being Madeira. Sarah Wood. And, um, oh yeah, you get, uh, you get some promo promotional stuff in the middle as well. Not a cigarette advert. It's basically a way to get free books and to, to hook you up with the, the, uh, the, subscription deals for Mills and Boone. I'd say their success is as much to do with their direct marketing techniques as it is the content of the books and the, the consistency as well. You know exactly what you're getting, same page count. Um, they, they Stories tend to hit the same kind of beats but with enough variety to keep you interested. Uh, no Promise of Love. That's the title of the book. I'm not just saying that as a thing to throw into my into my discourse. Uh, he's got only one use for women. Love affairs by the dozen, but wedded bliss, not for Rolf Felder, lord of the wealthy Swiss hotel family. So there's another businessman. Now, by this time, I'm beginning to feel a bit nervous that these might, they might never stop. You know, I thought there were 12, few more, but it may, maybe they're still being published today. They might, what if there are thousands of them? I felt like the Sorcerer's Apprentice. But they'd still come and I'd still think, oh, Crete, brilliant. So Love's Labyrinth, another mythological ver um, another mythological reference, is an island dreams set on Crete. Love or Nothing is... Ah, is that Portugal, Portugal again? Ah, Mallorca. West of Bohemia. Another historical document because this one is set in Czechoslovakia. Sicilian Spring. I don't need to say much more about that, do I? It's another Sally Wentworth. So, uh, the, the photos. In the true Euromances at the beginning, they seem to be taking special photos rather cheesily in the locations. Now the photos look a bit more like general stock shots. You might get background stuff that looks vaguely like it belongs to the country. So sudden fire, that is Portugal. Back to Portugal again. Can't tell you yet if it's a crossover with Chin Stroking Man, because uh, I haven't, haven't actually read it yet. Uh, Love's Revenge happens on Corsica. Island Dreams. In name only, um, Spain again. Yep, yep. Still with still with the nice maps. A bit more, a bit more Tolkien like with the with the mountains. Ah, Master of Destiny. Master of Destiny, sometimes miscatalogued as Matter of Destiny by Sally Haywood, uh, and that destiny is in the country of Corfu. Weird thing about buying secondhand books, particularly from the big sellers, the prices are set by software, basically. So whereas most of these cost a few pennies, uh, for some reason this one was a bit more expensive. Um, I'd like to think there's something fantastic about the content, uh, but well, I'll get back to you on that. Ice at Heart, that's going to be another Nordic one, is it not? We haven't had Sweden yet. Is it Sweden? Yes, it's Sweden. Sweden. Uh, now, Island Dreams, you might be thinking, yeah, they say islands. They really mean the Mediterranean. I bet they're not. It's not like they're going to do the Outer Hebrides, is it? 
Well, Mills and Boone would laugh at you. Ha ha ha, because Dark Side of the Island by Edwina Shaw is set on the Isle of Bower in the Hebrides. Um, yeah, so uh, this this one I I've, I've definitely want to read. Um, yeah, there, there's Barra right down at the bottom of the Hebrides. So that brings in Scotland. All of the UK now has one. The only one they didn't do was Northern Ireland, which is a shame. I could see a, a lovely photo with Giant's Causeway in the background. Would have been good. Uh, anyway, now by this time, I really, I, if I hadn't gone past the point of no return, you know, but I had Dangerous Desire, Dangerous Desire. Yes, absolutely. On Monaco, so Holland. Bitter Memories. Vaguely amused to get an email shortly afterwards from eBay. How do you like your bitter memories? Well, you know, you get to my age. Um, Margaret Mayo, Bitter Memories. Uh, where would you get bitter memories? On an island is where you'd get them. Tenerife, specifically. Okay. The Sultan's favourite. Now, it's like, We've gone way, way beyond any, even any, any European country there's ever been. This one's set in Turkey. Um, it's got one of those little readers marks been added there. So, so obviously someone who puts a strange squiggle at the very last page of text before the adverts start. Um, see previous video if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, and. Finally, this journey, the European epic journey that started in Greece with Alpha Man. It'd be so great if this title had Omega in the in the in it, but it doesn't. It's Leap of Faith by Rachel Elliott. It's an island dreams and it's set in Jersey. Now I haven't counted up any islands they haven't been to. I think there's that one that they did the um the the, uh, the nerve gas experiments on that people can't go to for a thousand years. Rockall, yes, they haven't they haven't haven't done one there. Um, but most other places have been covered. Some countries multiple times. And I took this 1994 book as being the final European romance because there's no adverts for any more in the back. Um, they still use the word Euromance, so although we're way past the, 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 lovely, the lovely Euromance logo, hello and welcome once again to Euromance, um, it says the editor, who ought to know that Euromance is what they are. So I choose to name all these 37 books as being the Euromances. Some were also done as postcards from Europe. It, it's all in the description. I think I'm doing this to talk to some future collector um, or somebody who's doing some sort of study of them or maybe thinks, you know, uh, let, let's find a cheap cheap old school Mills and Boone novel for a particular place they're going or that they live. Um, all of that info is there. I have, I have performed this service for you. And that is the end of that video thank you for watching uh, i'd love to see comments <laughs> oh god i'd love to see comments on this after this i'd love to see comments on anything um i'm never doing that again but do hit the subscribe button if you want to see me talking about books of all kinds with my philosophy of eclectic reading and my love of going down rabbit holes to explore Strange new worlds of vintage paperbacks. Mwah.